Inferring 3D from 2D images of an object is a central task in computer vision, and recent neural reconstruction methods provide promising solutions. However, these methods typically rely on approximately known camera viewpoints for the object under consideration. In this work, we focus on this task of estimating camera viewpoints given a small set of images of a generic object. A classical solution is to rely on correspondence driven methods, for example, call map but these methods do not work well given a small number of images. A main challenge is that wide baseline views often have insufficient overlap to compute useful correspondences. On these images of a car, even the state-of-the-art feature matcher superglue finds few inlier correspondences. To address this, we propose using top-down pose estimation that does not rely on feature matching. A second challenge is that object symmetries often lead to pose ambiguities that are difficult to optimize out of. For example, these two sides of this cup look almost indistinguishable. To address this, we propose to use a probabilistic energy-based approach. Our goal is sparse view pose prediction. Given a pair of images, our approach learns a distribution over relative camera rotations, and given a set of images, finds a globally consistent set of camera poses. Let's begin with the former. To represent distributions over camera pose, we take inspiration from implicit PDF which trains a network that predicts energy given an image and a rotation matrix. Since energy corresponds to unnormalized log probability, we can compute the conditional probability of a rotation matrix given an image by repeatedly querying the network with many rotations and marginalizing. A mesh-specific network can now model symmetries and pose distributions given a single image. However, this absolute pose is, in general, ill-defined without a canonical mesh or pose. Consider this image of a chair. Looking at it, we might be able to reason the camera is looking at it from the top left side. To do this, we rely on a mental model of how a canonical chair is oriented. But what about a bowl? What is the front or left side of a bowl? While the absolute pose is ill-defined, the relative camera pose given two images of the same instance is always well-defined. Thus, we train a relative pose estimator F that predicts energy given two images in a query relative rotation. F predicts the energy for the relative rotation to go from the camera corresponding to image 1 to that of image 2. Importantly, this network can be trained without ever having to define a canonical coordinate frame. We train our network on the common objects in 3D dataset, which contains video sequences from over 51 object categories. Each video sequence has ground truth cameras acquired using CallMap. Note that these camera poses lie in an arbitrary coordinate system and we can only use them because we operate on relative poses. We hold out 10 object categories to test generalization. To visualize our distributions, we first need a way to visualize the manifold of rotations. Rotation matrices have three degrees of freedom. To visualize each rotation matrix, we project them onto a two-sphere where the x-axis represents yaw, y-axis represents pitch, and color represents roll. Since each rotation is associated with a probability, we use the size to represent probability density and remove rotations with negligible probability. Here we visualize some pairwise distributions on held out object categories. Given two images of a couch, we see that our M method predicts four different modes, roughly corresponding to 90 degree increments. We visualize the ground truth relative rotation as the center of the open circle. Our method assigns the greatest probability to the correct mode. Next, we have two images of a hot dog. Our approach correctly predicts a single mode, perhaps because the pose is unambiguous due to the onions. Finally, we have two pictures of a frisbee. While the pitch and yaw are close to zero, the roll is ambiguous because of the rotational symmetry. Thus, our approach predicts many possible colors centered near the origin. For rectangular objects such as microwaves, our approach often outputs four different modes. Our model can also handle rotational symmetry. Now that we have a mechanism for predicting relative rotation between two images, we wish to recover n rotations given n images. Given n different images, each associated with a rotation, we can construct a factor graph where the energy of each edge can be computed using our pairwise predictor. We wish to maximize the total energy of the factor graph. Since it's difficult to compute the maximum analytically, we choose to optimize the rotations iteratively using block coordinate ascent. We initialize the rotations by constructing a maximum spanning tree that greedily selects the edges with the highest probability. At each iteration, we sample one rotation update by maximizing energy. 
Here we visualize one iteration of coordinate ascent. Given five images of a sandwich, we start with a set of possible rotations. We select one of the rotations to update, in this case the red one on the right. We randomly sample many possible potential updates. For each potential update, we compute the sum of the energy with each other rotation and select the one that maximizes the energy. We repeat this process until convergence. We evaluate our approach on the task of sparse view pose estimation for 3, 5, 10, and 20 images. To get n images from the video sequence, we consider both randomly sampling frames or taking uniformly spaced frames. We evaluate the average relative rotation between the ground truth and predicted relative rotations. We evaluate the proportion of relative poses that are within 15 and 30 degrees of the ground truth for both randomly sampled and uniformly spaced sequences. We note that pose errors within roughly 30 degrees are usually able to be optimized out of using techniques such as differentiable rendering. We evaluate our approach against Droid Slam, a state-of-the-art slam approach, and call map with super point and super glue feature matching. We find that these correspondence-based approaches struggle in sparse view settings and do not start to work until roughly 20 images, which is arguably no longer sparse. We find that the greedy maximum spanning tree solution performs better initially, but gets worse with more frames due to drift. We find that our solution with coordinate ascent performs the best given sparse views. However, it is eventually surpassed by correspondence-based approaches at 20 frames. Finally, to evaluate the importance of probabilistic prediction, we evaluate a baseline that directly predicts relative pose. And we find that it struggles, suggesting that probabilistic prediction is important for handling ambiguities in the poses. Here we visualize camera poses recovered from Droid Slam, Call Map, and our method in color, and the ground truth in black. Because our method only outputs rotations, we visualize all cameras with unit translation. Since the global coordinate system is arbitrary, we align the first predicted camera to the first ground truth camera, shown in green. When call map converges, the recovered cameras are highly accurate. Although our approach can consistently recover cameras that are close to ground truth, they tend to be noisy. Given 10 images, the correspondence-based approaches struggle to converge, whereas our methods continue to output reasonable but approximate poses. For 5 and 3 images, only our approach outputs anything reasonable. We find that our approach generalizes to unseen categories and continues to outperform baselines in sparse settings. The cameras predicted by our method can also be used to initialize sparse view 3D reconstruction. We use our method to initialize cameras for NURSE, a representative surface-based approach that takes noisy cameras as input. The red cameras are predicted by our method and the green cameras are the final cameras as optimized by NURSE. Thank you for watching. Please see our project webpage to read the paper, see more results, and run the code.